Hey everybody and welcome to Rocket League Central's Pro League Week 1. I am James Bott here joined by Shalthus. Shalthus, how are you doing today? Oh, Shalthus, hello? <laughs> oh, I think I'm on mute for him for, for Skype. So, hey Shalthus, welcome to the stream. We've got Rocket League Central's Pro League Week 1 underway. First matchup, Crown and Jewels versus uh, Supersonic Avengers. But Shalthus, welcome. Hi, man. It, it, this is a good day. This is a very good day. Yeah, this it's been a long time coming. <laughs> oh, to say the very least. This is something that uh, we have been waiting for for a while now, <laughs> quite a while. Uh, and, and just have been setting the stage and building everything up. And we're finally here. Week one, RLC Pro League. It just is too good. Absolutely. I'm super excited. So uh, we'll just take a moment here then to kind of set the stage. You guys may be coming in here wondering, uh, what is Rocket League Central's Pro League Week 1? How did these teams get decided? So uh, let's go ahead and cover that. So um, what we've got going uh, on was uh, uh, first we started out with a bunch of teams in an open qualifier. We wanted to have the ability for any team to have a shot at getting into this pro league. So for each region, this is what we did. So we did this for NA and EU. We held an open qualifier event. This let anybody who wanted to sign up could sign up and their team was competing for eight spots in the pro league qualifier. So we had over 120 teams all together come out um, and compete, but this was for each region. So um, playing that through, we had our top eight from the open qualifier come into the pro league qualifier where they faced off against power ranking teams for four spots in the pro league. And we actually added a fifth spot so that there would be a total of seven teams per region in the pro league, leading to a total of 14 teams all together. So um, going back in time, the Pro League qualifier uh, consisted of the eight invite teams, as you can see here, not Nexus, OC, SNK, Jarelli's Goodies, Moonmen, uh, Mad Magic, Double Tap, and then also nine teams that got in through the open qualifier. And that was Failure to Launch, Dragonfly, Lucky Bounce, Electric Zero, Average Players, Voltage, Fusion Core Blue, and East Coast uh, Gaming. So um, out of those teams, we had just a few move on, actually only five. And it's funny because you can see the, the ratings there, uh, the power rankings, the one, two, three, four teams made it in. But surprisingly, failure to launch uh, was the one team from the open play-in that did make it, leading to uh, these teams you see here moving into the NA Pro League. And I don't know about you, Shalthus, but I was really excited to see an open team make it in to the Pro League for the North American region. Oh, me too. I mean, I, I was hoping we would see it on both regions, mainly because what I really wanted to see out of this was a team that we didn't know, that we didn't initially think, oh, they are definitely going to be a pro league team, make their way in and prove to be able to hang against some of these big top tier teams that, you know, we've known and, and followed for so long. So the fact that failure to launch got in there versus a lot of other teams is actually very exciting, so. Indeed, so we'll kick it over here to the EU region um, to explain how those teams made it in. So uh, these were the teams that uh, made it through or made it at least to the pro qualifier. So these were the 16 teams, the eight uh, auto invite, or the eight invite teams on the left uh, that were in the power rankings. And then the on the right, we have all the open teams that made it in in the open qualifier. So uh, unfortunately for those teams, uh, none of the open teams ended up making it in, but still a powerhouse uh, group of teams did uh, show up and uh, claim, claim their spot in the EU Pro League. So Shalthus, uh, did you think there were any surprises about teams that did or didn't get in? Um, no, I don't think not a lot of huge surprises. Based off of kind of the performance we'd seen as of late, I am, you know, it's hard to say if I'm a little surprised or if it really just has to do with the fact that there are so many competitive teams within the EU region that Gold Rush didn't manage to make it in. Um, but they had a rough run. You know, I think that was their biggest problem is they had a very rough run trying to get through the qualifying tournament. And at the very end, you know, they just weren't able to get the last critical win that they would need and, and Noble managed to, uh, to knock them out and claim that seventh spot. Um, so I'm a little surprised they're not here. But again, the, the big fact is that there are a lot of good teams in Europe, and there's only seven spots. 
So yeah, we knew that there were gonna there were definitely gonna be a lot of teams that are capable of being pro league level, but just no room, no room at the end. So yeah, absolutely. So that leads us uh, to today our very very first matchup. We've got Supersonic Avengers versus versus uh, Crown and Jewels, which is a new name, but uh, players that we've seen for some time. But uh, Shalthus, uh, how about you tell us a little bit about the players on each side? Oh, well, I mean, Crown and Jewels is a very familiar squad. Of course, you've got Pashy, formerly from Swarm, who moved over to Peace Hater a while ago. Uh, they, he is joined by uh, Yeezy and uh, Siki, all former members of the same team. They've come together and just basically they, they had a rough start, you know, as they were kind of finding their footing, finding their rhythm and getting things going. Ultimately, they've started to come back, pick up some really big wins, and really establish themselves as the kind of premier team that Pashy is typically a part of. Uh, on the other side, you've got Supersonic Avengers. Now, they were always one of those teams that you kind of had an eye on. You kind of was like, oh, you know, those are those are some good players. Then they disappeared for a while. And, I mean, as far as you've got ELMP, Maestro, and Greasy, all of whom were very capable players, but the whole team just kind of fell off the radar for a bit. Then, I would say maybe a month, a month and a half ago, they came back and they were just dominant. They were winning left and right. And, of course, the most important thing we can take out of this is just this past Friday, these two teams met in the Gfinity Grand Final, and it was Supersonic Avengers that would take that Series 4-2. So it's a little bit of a, uh, of a rematch here just a few days later. Absolutely. So uh, it looks like we do have the teams in the lobby here. So we are going to be able to get this kicked off. But uh, I'm really excited. This will be the first set of matches uh, of the Rocket League Central Pro League. And again, this is going to be a series of five, a little bit different. Uh, it's not a best of five. It is a series of five. So we will see five games no matter what. This is going to be awesome because we will get to analyze all the statistics generated from all these great games. So we are guaranteed five matches between uh, these two teams. So it's going to be an excellent, excellent show. I am really excited. So we'll get that lobby started right now. But uh, just a little bit uh, fun fact about these teams. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of Octane um, as Octane is the favorite car for pretty much all the players on both of these teams. And I wonder if that's an EU thing, although I know Cooks here is quite good with the Dominus. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> it seems that every player has kind of found their the car that they like and, and, the, and they've fallen into a pretty typical pattern. If there's a meta of any kind, at least in terms of cars, that seems to be what has been established. Um, but yeah, we see every now and then some players like to, uh, you know, pull something special out of their hat, if you will, and, and go playing with it with a different car. Um, so, you know, everybody's kind of figured out what they like and what they don't like and whatever it may be. But I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, the car doesn't necessarily matter as much as the overall skill does. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> so we've you know, got... You crown and jewels going blue so this is this is it this is the beginning the very very first game of the rocket league central pro league we got it kicked off crown and jewels versus supersonic avengers here we go all right this should be very exciting i mean we're looking at two teams here who are practically neck and neck in terms of overall skill we know they're very capable of getting the big win and it's a big matchup from this past friday in elmp oh god it just doesn't stop yeah, so it's you can see <laughs> Yeezy trying to get the hit there, not able to get a good clear. Greasy sets it up perfectly off the wall for ELMP, who is waiting for that. So a little bit of a mistake on the wall clear, leading to an early goal. I love Lamp. ELMP. <laughs> I mean, that is, he's a very notorious striker here, so it's no surprise there that he opens up the scoring here. But I know that Crown and Jewels is not going to rest on their laurels, and we're going to see them open up some scoring here pretty soon, too, I imagine. Yep, so a clear attempt going in from Pashi, denied by Greasy Maestro up to try to take advantage of it. Yeezy, though, shutting that one down. Yep, nice clear back down the field. Good demo along the wall here. Demo plays, you know, I always love seeing them kind of come into effect now and then. Uh, they can be very, very useful when the timing is just right, but you give it enough time and it's practically like you didn't do it at all. See Greasy trying to get a pass back potentially. Uh, ELMP with a good hit there and a redirect attempt barely missing from Greasy. 
yeah, they're really a lot of back and forth at this point. Ever since that first goal, we haven't seen a lot of pressure on net except for that shot that came very, very close. And oh, down goes Pashi, and now oh, they, they had they, that ball was kind of sitting in front of that goal for a long time, all things considered. Yeah, so Pashi though does have an opportunity after that demo to get full boost and come back, but we've got a long distance shot. Whoa. Yeezy just getting back in time, but now a good offensive opportunity for Greasy, who puts it just a little too high, a little too much power on that one, but Lamp. Setting it up for Maestro, although Siki shutting that down very quickly. Yeah, that left them a good opening here. It looks like they're trying to take advantage of it, but missed on that play. And look at this teamwork as they're moving the ball upfield. Really nice back and forth. Yeah. Pashi in net, getting a good save here. Crown and Jewels does get the clear. We'll see if they're able to keep this in enemy territory. Supersonic Avengers with their backs to the wall a little bit. Opportunity to get a clear, but Siki, oh, he just mishits that. And it looks like it's oh. going to lead to an own goal. Let's get into the bird's eye view for that one. So you can see oh, Siki man. going for the clear. Doesn't get enough on it. Greasy tapping it back on net. Siki trying to get it cleared off to the side, but ends up just hitting it into his own net. A valiant effort, but he really needed to get a bigger clear on that first hit if he was going to hope to try to break up that scoring opportunity. Yeah, he really did. I mean, just fell too far and just did not get enough pressure onto it. And then making that last ditch effort attempt to clear and he just was too far behind the ball and ends up putting it right into his own net. And that's a heartbreaker. And that is not the way you want to start off the series or the set of games. If you will. <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it a series or a set or, or whatever. But series of match. five games. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> but there will be five games played no matter oh, and what. Look at that. And so that was a long distance shot here. Let's see how this play develops. Mastro and ELMP both going up for that and missing it, which led to a layup for Siki, who fortunately was able to get that one in, almost putting it a little bit wide, but two players going for it and missing it is never good. And right there, it got him scored on. Yeah, I mean, that's just a bit of a miscue on the part of both players. It left the door wide open for Siki's M. And, and you know, you do that to Siki, and he is very easily going to pick you apart. Granted, that goal was close, though. It really hugged the corner there but yeah it was a wide open as it, is, it counts it goes in. <laughs> absolutely so pashi uh getting the pool shot clear there trying to set it up in the mid greasy actually just passes it into the mid two players from crown and jewel or from supersonic trying to get that one out but not paying off this big failure in front of the net greasy does manage to slow it down but then both maestro and the lmp can't get the contact to clear it out and yuzi just charges in with a huge finish i mean you can't leave the ball just hanging there. It's like setting it up on a golf tee for your opponent. Yes, they needed a big clear there. Both players just parallel parking next to each other. And Yeezy come, comes up and just dunks it right over him. So a little bit of a difficult situation there. And now we're all tied up. Oh, Maestro, nice play off the wall there. Feeds it forward and Greasy. What an awesome play. This is phenomenal. Look at Maestro. He's going to hit this ball right off the wall. Breaks past the defender. And then Greasy gets past Yeezy. Beautiful teamwork there on the part of Supersonic Avengers. So we will go on board with Greasy, who just scored that last goal. See if he can help extend the lead. Maestro up on the wall with a beautiful pass to the mid, and Greasy oh. just puts it up to the top left corner, barely missing. Yeah, I mean, this is showing that there's a lot of offensive skill from every player here on Supersonic Avengers, but on defense, they're having such a hard time getting decent clears, and that could end up being the thing that costs them throughout this, this uh, set of games. Yeah, we've seen Supersonic Avengers struggle in some of those awkward situations in front of the net. They really need to play with a lot more authority in that situation and get that ball cleared oh. out, and Pashi just dunks it into the net, tying it up. That is what we call a fist punch goal. Look at Pashi as he comes in on the net here. I mean, he is just fighting with <laughs> LMP and just drives him and the ball back. I mean, that is just brute force play right there, and it pays off, tying this game up. Yeah, that's that's what you call getting posterized. That's going to show up on a Rocket League poster somewhere because Pashi just drove that thing into the net. That was pretty Car sick. Has bruises now. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was a physical play right there. So we've got Pashi picking up full boost, lurking, waiting for his opportunity to put one on goal. He accidentally side flips, leading to ELMP winning that challenge. Pashi trying to get some boost here to make a play. Both teams fighting for control. Good little bit of slowdown there. I think they might have deliberately done that to wait for Greasy. They'd be able to get back involved in the play. 
Uh, and it paid off for them, so the demo didn't really result in anything. Oh, but here's a nice play Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that was a beautiful flick there by Pashi, trying to set up the pass to his teammate. Unfortunately, they were not able to capitalize, but that was a good opportunity created. Good job playing the corner there. It does break a little high across the net, so... We're seeing some good pressure coming out from Supersonic Avengers, and it seems like whenever Crown and Jewels get the ball, they try to slow it down a little bit because they're figuring out that when the ball is moving in awkward ways, it's really putting Supersonic Avengers on the back foot, and they're having a hard time reading it. I mean, it looks like we will have overtime in Game 1 of the Rocket League Central uh, Pro League, so a uh, very exciting way to start it out. Crown and Jewels, Supersonic Avengers, 3-3, three to three in a uh, deadlock here. This is golden goal, so first team to score wins. Yeezy yep. with a shot on net, oh. and that's going to be it. Crown and Jewels takes game one. Yeah, no surprise here. I mean, look at this beautiful play set up by Siki out the corner. Yeezy just gets it right over Greasy's head. There was really difficult to react to because that ball was coming up very high. And a big win for Crown and Jewels here. But we started this series off saying that... These are two very evenly matched teams, and the fact that we started off this whole set of games with an overtime just kind of emphasizes that point a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to be changing maps here. This is one uh, new thing that we'll be doing. Teams will get to alternate picks, so we will be changing the maps after every game, depending on what the team's selected. So we will have a little bit of variety, and it also opens the door to possibly uh, seeing Wasteland, which uh, would be quite a bit of surprise as... A lot of the top players, uh, Wasteland, uh, you know, it's kind of a difficult map to play on. You never really know how it's going to bounce. But uh, it does add some variety, which is always nice. Yeah, it does. And I think the, the ability to, you know, spice things up is, is always interesting. So we'll get here. We've got, it uh, looks like, a night map. This will be good. We've got Crown and Jewels up 1-0 versus Supersonic Avengers. And we've got the kickoff ball in Supersonic Avengers zone. ELMP with a good clear here. Trying to follow it up, but Yeezy off the wall. Putting it right over to Pashi, but that is interrupted Ooh. by Greasy. Yeah, nice breakup of that attempt to, to move the ball forward. Tried to put the shot on net, but Siki was right in front of it, so... Right now, I think, uh, you know, coming off of that overtime win, I'm sure both teams definitely want to ride some of the momentum that they had from that last game and, and really open up with some relatively early scoring here it's obviously won't be as early as the first goal for uh for supersonic avengers that we saw oh last game. wow <laughs> and that was a rocket by elmp but yeezy turned that one aside so supersonic avengers with good pressure out of the gate that clear needs to be big and sicky does not let his team down with a huge clear that's actually almost a pass right into the mid yeah, that was nearly right on target. If that ball was just a little bit further to the right, that would have gone in. And here we go again. You can see they're slowing it down right in front of the net, trying to make awkward shots on net that they know Supersonic Avengers is going to have a hard time with. And we saw it all last game. We just saw a little bit of it this game. So, not very surprising. But we're going to see... I think we're just going to see the big high-velocity shots out of Supersonic Avengers. Absolutely. So you can see here, all these players... Pretty much rocking the Octane. Must be the European favorite for the most part. Got a huge hit from Yeezy. He's going to try to put this back into the mid off the wall. But no, he goes for a tactical demo. We'll see how this plays off. A good hit. That's going to bounce into the mid. But unfortunately, you see there, although he did take the player oh. out of the mid. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> although he did take the player out of the mid, he didn't have boost to be able to get back and help from that pass in the mid. So... Uh, Got to be careful of how you use the demos. It almost did pay off there, though. Yeah, it did. And, and uh, you know, sometimes if you get it on the right timing in the right place, it can certainly pay off. The fact that this game has no score right now is both surprising and not surprising, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all. but <laughs> Semi-surprising. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, you kind of expect these teams to come out swinging like they did in the last game, but the fact that they are so closely matched... They may be falling back into a bit of a defensive mode instead of just relying solely on their uh, their very potent striking because both of these teams have really strong strikers across their roster. So, yeah, up and uh, missed hit there by Greasy Maestro trying to get this ball into the mid. Greasy 
Uh, trying to win that 50-50. Pashi up in the air with a shot on net, oh, and that's going to be enough to get the first goal of the game. Good start here by Pashi. He's going to read this ball all the way down and just drills it right into ELMP, technically. But that is basically one of those things that was going to go in regardless. And it just happened to work out for Pashi there, who really just drives it home. So, Yes, Pashi, a very well-known player, oftentimes number one on the 1v1 leaderboard. He is a German force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and every now and then you will see some of that 1v1 skill play out in this team game. You don't get to see that a lot, but just wait for the moment where Pashi gets a nice break and he'll just start showing that excellent ball control that he has and dribbles that ball forward. Yeah, you can see him passing to Siki on the wall there. Yeezy and Pashi both going for that one, and Pashi accidentally bumping him, which that is going to result in a goal. Huge mistake on the part of Crown and Jules here. Both players committing to the same ball. It, it cuts them out of the play, and Maestro just gets enough of a tap. Gets enough speed behind it and net wide open. So, that, that was a huge misplay on the part of Crown and Jules there to just leave their gate wide open, and uh, it was punished. Yeah, that, uh, one of those situations, sending two players in the ball, and unfortunately, Pashi did get a bump on his teammate, and when you get bumped, it uh, takes a little bit to recover. It does. I mean, that, that will take you completely out of the play because uh, it'll also kind of disrupt disrupt you a little bit mentally as you're trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, Whoa. look at that. <laughs> so so you'll see here, Yeezy accidentally just taps this ball into the corner there, and no one is able to get up in time from Crown and Jewels, and ELMP just whips his car around and is able to tap that pass in. So Yeezy, uh, unfortunately, putting that ball into the mid, into the danger zone, and you never want to do that so that leads to a goal and now supersonic avengers is up two to one weird little fight in the middle there over the kickoff and that shot on goal was right on target but yeezy got in front of it so this offensive attack by supersonic avengers is looking very good here in game two of this set and uh could be enough for them to you know even things up a little bit here good pass attempt there by pashi not enough height to really make it Dangerous. Siki trying to pop that up for Pashi. Pashi's going to wait for it to bounce so he can get a lot of power on it and goes up for the backward shot. Unfortunately, misreading that just a bit and not able to put that one in. You can see players getting a little caught up on the uh, the corners a bit as they're trying to I don't know, get some decent clears here or set some shots up, but you can just see them kind of get stuck now and then, uh, which does sometime happen. So... So we're going on board with Yeezy from Crown and Jewels, who opts to go for boost, leaving the net open for just a second, is able to recover in time. But we've got a floater there. Oh. Still not out of the danger zone. Yeezy does get the clear here, but Siki is right on his tail and actually bumps him a little bit out of the way. Yep, and Crown and Jewels running out of time. Only 10 seconds to go to get one more goal, but it looks like Supersonic Avengers might just have what they need. Oh, Yeezy, he has been a force in that this whole series so far. Oh, so Pashi needing it to get it past that last player. As soon as this ball touches the ground, that's going to be it. A good path to the mid. And oh my goodness, it looked like it bounced off the ground, but it did not because that would have meant the game was over. Pashi keeping the play alive over to Siki, who puts it top down and ties it up, saying into, into overtime. That's about the most exciting finish or continuation of a game that you could ask for. That is outstanding. I mean, you saw the play coming together, and that ball was just a foot away from being dead on the ground, but he got just enough of an angle off that crossbar, and big break for Crown and Jules here. Now we're going overtime, and let's see if they can get a bit of a repeat. So we're going to go on board with Siki here, the all-star of this game, at least, and Yeezy with the dribble goal. He just tucks this ball under his door and carries it like a carry-on bag. Look at this, no contest, didn't have to fight with anybody. Smooth sailing into the goal and Crown and Jewels is gonna take two games, no problem. So we've got two overtime wins here for Crown and Jewels. So uh, very, very close matches. Would not be surprised to see Supersonic Avengers come back, but you can see uh, an even amount of shots for both sides. Uh, actually one more shot for Supersonic Avengers, so a very, very close match, and really Supersonic Avengers uh, looked like they had that one all the way to the end, but ended up just losing out in the final second with an zero second, the shot clock buzzer goal from Siki 
who must uh, be patting himself on the back right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is, uh, you know, that is a huge goal at the literal last possible moment to make it happen. Uh, and he just managed to get that break exactly where he needed it. So really good start for, super, for a crown and jewels here. Exactly the court, kind of start to pro league. I think they wanted. And, uh, I mean, that's the second game in a row that's been overtime, and it's been just uh, so close between these two teams thus far. It really is unreal. Absolutely. So we've got game three here. Crown and Jewels taking the first two in overtime. So this uh, an incredibly close match. We're here at Beckwith Knight, which is the third map pick today. So uh, good to see a little bit of variety. But Supersonic Avengers is also going to want a little bit of variety. Uh, maybe winning an overtime game this time or just winning it outright as they certainly uh, had a, a good shot at the last one and deserved it except for that last second goal that they conceded. But uh, both these teams putting on a great show for us today. Oh, yeah. It is looking phenomenal between these two teams. I mean, the fact that we're going into overtime so much is outstanding. Um, I, I definitely am in the party that I think Supersonic Avengers would rather avoid any further overtimes. <laughs> Those haven't been going too well for them. Uh, and it really would come down to just getting some good scoring out right out of the way and just putting more offensive pressure on. But there's a, a, a few little mistakes that we're seeing throughout this series by the team and just a lot of whiffs and uh, just miscues on, on at least individual part. We're not seeing the team errors that we're seeing on crown and jewels where they seem to be all com or like multiple cars committing to the same shot or clear or save which can end up really taking people out of position as we've seen a couple times yeah and even there just a second ago we saw all three players go up for that but patch got enough distance on the ball to where they could recover but still uh, they're going to want to get uh, into the rhythm a little bit more and start trusting each other, understanding the positioning so that they don't get caught in that situation. Sicky though, with a golden opportunity to put that one in, and he barely hits it at all, and that turns into an easy clear, but a good opportunity there for Crown and Jewels, not, but they did not take advantage of it. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, that was just a gimme for ELMP while he was in net. You know, he, he would have had a difficult time if that ball had any kind of height or pressure on it because ELMP was just dead stopped. Uh, but that ball had nothing behind it, so easy stop on that relatively open shot. And that is, you know, you can't let those opportunities get by, especially in games that have been so close like this. You get a wide open net like that, you punish it. You, you have to. Absolutely here, and ELMP going to try to do that oh. easy, getting back in time, though, using his boost to get there. Super Sonic Avengers knocking on the door, but both players going up for that one, so no one is going to be in the mid to take oh. advantage of that pass really too bad because again wide open opportunity but because they both committed to it nobody was in position like you said yeah greasy would have had to been the one but he was out getting boost at the time barely missing that boost so they're doing a good job of controlling the boost game here and continuing to get shots on net as long as you continue to pressure the net the opposing team cannot get out and get boost so supersonic avengers doing a good job though although crown and jewels finally breaks out yeah, that took them a while, but they got Yeezy to thank for that. He has been just outstanding in net throughout this game, throughout this series, really. I mean, so many huge saves that you're going to see getting credited to Yeezy. And even if they're not credited, oh, oh, <laughs> oh Sicky. <laughs> that ball looked like it was about to explode, but he just turned that one aside. Clutch play by Sicky. That was a beautiful shot by Maestro, too, to just float it above the defender. But nah, Sicky was right there. Got just enough contact to clear it out and disrupt that play. ELMP, nice save there. Puts it behind him. Yeah. Prevents any kind of uh, good rebound opportunity as well. So smart defensive play on his part there. Yeah, he uh, actually is going all the way into the enemy's team's zone to get that boost. But it was a very good flick there to knock that one aside. That's very challenging to do. You have to rest the ball on your hood and flick that one aside. So a lot of mechanical ability there. Even though it didn't look that special, it's not that easy. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, when you play this game and you get a chance to actually see how hard it is to really get the level of control that some of these players have you very quickly appreciate the kind of skill they have even in those really simple little taps and defensive plays yeah if you uh want to see what we're talking about just spend a few moments in all-star aerial training <laughs> <laughs> yeah give that a test see what you can do there oh and a great shot by greasy kept in by maestro almp trying to finish but again turned aside by crown and jewels Supersonic Avengers is just knocking on the door, trying to get in here. 
but Crown and Jewels has that deadlocked, dead bolted, and both these teams in a stalemate right now. <laughs> oh, no, well, not for much longer. Pashi saw that open opportunity. Nobody was in position. ELMP sets this up, trying to clear it out, and they both try to react to it, and he can't get back in time. Pashi just puts it right in the center of the net, and that late goal could be all it takes to win this game. So we're going on board with Pashi, who just scored that goal. Very oh. layup-like into the mid. Not a bad, not a good clear there by Greasy. Very risky, but fortunately for him, nobody with Crown and Jewels was there to try to punish it. Yeah, big win by Siki there at half, and he gets the shot on net, and that's oh. going to be enough to go in. Ten seconds left, two goal lead. It looks like Crown and Jewels is going to take this third game. That is what we like to call uh, insurance, as it were. <laughs> You know, getting that nice two-goal lead here with only 10 seconds to play pretty much says that uh, Crown and Jewels is going to take the third game here. So yeah, that's going to give them the uh, the advantage in the set, which yeah. is uh, good for them. Yeah, it looked like Greasy was a little bit fooled by the pace of that ball. It was a slower shot, and it ended up uh, just going under Greasy. You could see he tried to air correct that, but a big 50-50 win there by Siki. Uh, and also uh, turning that into a goal, uh, very impressive. So one man show there to take that 2-0 and every goal counts because you never know if teams are tied at the end of the season. Uh, the top four teams from each region move on. So there are seven teams in each region. The top four move on into the playoffs. So every goal counts because you know you never know what's gonna be the, the tiebreaker if there is an identical record between another team. Uh, you never know what it's going to come down to. If you have the same record, you you know you never uh, you know see it's it's everything yeah. matters. Got to no, stat <laughs> pad the stats. There's no such thing as padding stats. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, every team has got six matches ahead of them throughout this regular season. Very easy to wind up with a three-three record. So you want to make sure that uh, you know, or, or like you said, a tying record with another team. So if you can get that head-to-head -head advantage, then that can really pay off. So there's absolutely. certainly. There's certainly a lot to deal with, for sure, when it comes to uh, getting these big wins. So we're going to go on board with Siki, who was a uh, big contributor to the last win there. Pashi and Siki scoring the last goals. Crown and Jewels up 3-0 in this series. Yep, now we're back in urban. Urban daytime now, or at least normal urban, if you will. Look at the amount of pressure finally pays off for Supersonic Avengers. I mean, just look at this relentless, constant shot totals being so, put on net. <laughs> so fortunately, uh, ELMP bounces that right over the other team. But Maestro and Greasy were a little too close there. And if ELMP would have missed that or gotten stuffed, that would have been nobody back for Supersonic Avengers. But fortunately, ELMP comes up clutch and finishes that one off. Yep, that is a very necessary thing, not just for the sake of, you know, letting in another goal or potentially leaving your gate wide open, uh, but really because that's the kind of pressure they were putting on all throughout the end of that last game before that first goal from Crown and Jewels came in, and it's taken them this long to really make something happen. Oh, oh wow. So this that is beautiful. You Look can at Siki. Yeah, he gets the tap around ELMP and another <laughs> tap past Maestro. <laughs> Just flicks that one in, so very there, good ball control by Siki. There's just a trail of broken axles <laughs> left by Siki on that play. That was amazing. Just such stellar ball control. Yep, so we're staying on board with Siki here, who tied it up 1 1 for Crown and Jewels. Yeezy with a good set here for Siki. Siki puts it just too high, but it's going to bounce for Pashi, although it's broken up by Greasy, and oh! <laughs> Siki using the back of his car to just tap this one in. We're going to go into the bird's eye view so you can see that happen. Siki just moves into position so it bounces right off his bum into the net. So good play by Siki there. Very aware and getting a goal. Putting his squad ahead 2-1. Yeah, that, that is a good way to kind of commit three forward on the offensive attack like that is to just try and shut down a lot of the potential rebound positions and uh, prevent any clear opportunities and Maybe a little bit of luck was on their side as well on that play and just the way that their opponents were positioned, they managed to take advantage of it. But really quick pair of goals here, or, you know, set of three 
goals as it is now. <laughs> <laughs> so ELMP trying to get the shot there, but Siki, uh, ball comes right to him and he redirects it into the net. Maestro not able to make really the save nice. there, trying to, but just short. Yeah, that can be very difficult to read sometimes, especially when you're not, maybe if you're not quite expecting for a player to be in the perfect position to make a really just spot on sort of shot. And that's exactly what Siki did here. So I'm a little surprised. I remember when I was, uh, when I gave my predictions during Friday's stream, I was talking about who I thought would win these games or, you know, how I thought the series, series would play out. And I was given the nod to uh, Supersonic Avengers, but Crown and Jewels has just come out looking really fantastic here and taking advantage of the uh, mistakes that Supersonic Avengers is making. Yeah, the last time I think we saw these two teams match up was in ESL, and uh, Crown and Jewels did fall to Supersonic Avengers, but uh, Supersonic Avengers had quite the sub being Cooks here. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. That, that is certainly a big tilt, and, and it was only a 4-2 win in, in Gfinity on Friday that gave Supersonic Avengers the whole tournament win. Uh, but yeah, the fact that Cooks here was there, that's a that is a pretty big sub to work with any team. But despite that, you know, they clearly are the kind of team that can hang with the best. We've seen it throughout this series. You know, they are not a bad team by any stretch. Yeah, Maestro shutting team. down that play <laughs> at half, almost getting the dribble goal. Maestro doing everything he can to get his squad back in it. Maestro again. Losing that 50-50 there on the second shot. Then you can see Supersonic Avengers trying to get this into Crown and Jewel's zone. But Siki saying no to that. Although the battle Whoop. for possession still continues. Very nice play in by Greasy there. Almost a good setup for ELMP. But Pashi just gets some nice contact up above. Sends it across the field. And we're going back the other direction yet again. I mean, the back and forth right now is just clearly in the advantage of Crown and Jewels, just eating time off the clock. You know, they don't need to score any more goals. They just need to waste Su Supersonic Avengers' time. Doesn't mean they're not going to try to put more goals on net. <laughs> you know, keep it going. <laughs> Bump up the score. I'm so Yeezy, the last line of defense here for Crown and Jewels, doing a good job of continuing to keep the ball in the enemy zone. And Siki oh, oh. with a shot in the upper 90. That one's not going to get stopped. Yeah, good reaction on his part. Greasy tries to play this forward, but Siki is right there. Just seems to be in the right place at the right time all throughout this series, making really key shots on net. And uh, definitely coming through as the MVP in this game, in, in my opinion at least, this particular game, just has made a handful of really stellar plays. Absolutely. Crown and Jewels uh, after those first few ones being quite close. This one is starting to get in to a little bit of a runaway and some people might be a little bit confused right now thinking isn't this a best of five why are they playing if crown and jewels 3 0 no it is not a best of five it is a five game series every team guaranteed at least five games or exactly five games and uh at the end of the league and it looks like an almost a goal there but the at the end of the regular season the teams with the best records will move on into the playoffs. So it is a five game series, not a best of five. Yeah, every single win counts for something. Even if you're even if you're a team that loses a whole set 4-1, you know, that one win could really be the difference of making it into the playoffs versus being sent home after the season's over. I'm sick he trying to put some pressure on Maestro, shutting that down. Just 10 seconds left here in game four. Crown and Jewels really had this one from the very beginning. Looking a lot better as time goes on. Supersonic Avengers still fighting for that first win of the day. I am surprised. I am very surprised that they are going to lose these first four games here. I mean, these are teams that, you know, they've clearly shown that they are very close in terms of overall performance and just the... You know the kind of results that they can deliver so the fact that you know crown and jewels has managed to edge out the win for four games now i mean this this game is certainly much more tilted than the previous ones but i mean still absolutely <laughs> you know, expected a, a much more closer series three two or or something here so there's still a chance here for uh 
for Supersonic Avengers to try to get at least one win out of this. I mean, you go 5-0 in, in a set, and that's going to hurt you a lot, especially in a region that is as competitive as the European side will be. You Absolutely. know, we were talking about this earlier. And... Oh, oh, it's God. sick. <laughs> Goal by Siki here. He was in the mid, waiting for the pass from Yeezy, who put it up the wall to himself. Beautiful one-two play there. Unstoppable shot. ELMP did his best, but still just coming up short. And Siki puts Crown and Jules ahead early, just 10 seconds in. Yeah, everything is looking really good for these players right now. And, oh, huge stop by ELMP. But, I mean, the, the quality of the opportunities now, it, it seems to have tilted heavily in favor of Crown and Jules starting with that last game. I mean, there was oh, that yeah. two-goal in game three, but... And that touch there by Siki to set up Pashu for the shot was beautifully done. We'll go on board with Pashu. Scored that last goal on the... Uh, or scored the last goal on the pass from Siki. See if he's able to extend the lead here. Crown and Jules winning every game so far. Uh, probably going to oh. be up at the top. Unfortunately, <laughs> Pashu misses that one. Conceding the goal. You can see him... What a saving himself here. Yeah. Being really a good just sport about lets it. that ball kind of get behind him, and not much, you can, not much you can do about that one except for just watch the goal happen. Three goals already in the first 30 seconds, so a big change of pace from what we've been seeing so far between these two teams, which is you know fairly low-scoring games most of the time. Yes, indeed. But uh, Crown and Jewels kicking it into high gear after the last uh, game, and oh, a big save opportunity. <laughs> But uh, Crown and Jewels coming up short on that one. You can see Greasy with a good block here. Just airs it up to himself. Taps it on net, which is relatively an easy save. But you can see Pashi tried to hit that over to the side and passed it right into his teammate who knocked it into the net. So not the uh, most beautiful goal, but a goal nonetheless. You know, I and mean, that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter how good they look as long as they go in the net. <laughs> <laughs> a goal is a goal. Pulling shoe ugly goals. And as long as you win... And I think that's something that Supersonic Avengers really needs here. At least one win. Get the points off of that. Build something in the regular season out of week one here. Because they're, they're going to need it, you know. They're, they do have that bye week, which will be coming up at some point, And that's going to be a whole week where they don't have the potential to score anything. So you have to maximize every single series you have and get something out of it. Absolutely. So you can see Siki trying to get this ball out of his zone. Greasy there. To deny putting in a shot on net. Pashi turning it aside, but the attack still going on. Pashi gets back up in oh. time. Maestro doing everything he could to block that one. Getting there just too late. Ends up just expediting that ball's trip into the net. But Pashi, though, with a beautiful aerial. Yeah, Maestro I mean, that was not able to make the save. Really spot on. Not so much that Maestro could do on that play, so. Just really good plays out of both of these teams. I mean, Crown and Jules has looked stellar throughout this entire match. Uh, I mean, they've pulled out all the stops. They would love, and I know Pashi, I would say fairly well at this point. Uh, I think knowing him and hoping that that attitude applies to the rest of his team, they would love a 5-0 series here. And yeah, my goodness, we have a $200 donation from CRS who says, I love you, my team, and CRS, we love you too. Thank you for the donation. We greatly appreciate it. And donations again, guys, go towards the prize pool for the players so it directly helps the scene. And now we've got a goal and celebration of that big donation. Look at this aerial dribble. <laughs> that was for you, for wow. that huge donation. Yeah, inspiration to Pashi. $200 worth of inspiration. <laughs> that is just power right there. But that, I mean, that was just a beautiful looking goal too. I mean, beautiful mid-air dribbling there. Really just showing off at this point. And I think Crown and Jewels know that uh, they're, they're owning the momentum of this game. They're owning practically everything here. They've got four games already, and they really want to make it five and just get that huge, huge regular season lead. Yes, that is, certainly is going to put them up number one on the ladder. They might have to share it with someone else, but 5-0 is the best start you could ask for. And Supersonic Avengers, though, digging themselves a little bit of a hole, but Crown and Jewels... Has been very impressive recently. Uh, we'll see if they can continue to keep that streak going next week. But so far, uh, you're right. There has been a lot of ownage so far. <laughs> there hasn't. Oh, jeez. Huge defensive laps there on the part of Supersonic Avengers. 
and that was really easily punished by, by Yeezy here. Look at Greasy misses that. Maestro can't even react, and Yeezy just puts it way up top in the far left corner. And that's all, man. That's all she wrote, I think, at this point. Yeah, there's two minutes left. It's not impossible, but we got to look at the bigger picture, and, and how do you get your head back into a game like this? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you've, you're already 4-0 down in the game or in the five-game series, so uh, you're a little bit dejected here, but still Supersonic Avengers putting up a fight, though Crown and Jewels is not letting off the gas at all. And it does look like they're going to take this one uh, pretty much not a lot of time left on this. But also there's a question, does donations go towards prize pool? Yes, donations are going to help increase the prize pool depending on how much support we get from the community that's going to determine how big uh this pro league gets so uh we turn your donations right into funding everything that it takes to put on these productions so we thank you uh for doing that guys and also helps out the players helps out the rocket league scene so thank you again for those and if you guys have any questions our admins can help out with that but back to the game still 5-2 crown and jewels yeah. still owning quite a bit just a lot of back and forth right now. And there's a good shot on net by Supersonic Avengers, but Pashi just denies it again. And I mean, e every time they put a precise shot on net and somebody from Crown and Jewels gets behind it and knocks it out of harm's way, it's just lowering that morale even more and more and more. And it's practically at rock bottom at this point, all things considered. And I mean, you're kind of seeing it. If you really watch this game and really watch these players, you can kind of see how the energy just slowly starts to get waned out of players as they lose or fail to get shots to convert. Whereas with Crown and Jewels, everything has energy behind it. They're showboating a little bit. They're having fun because they're winning. They're getting big goals, big plays, big wins. And that's really what it comes down to. Because yeah, they know can... what they're playing for here. <laughs> exactly. Playing for... It's a long. It's going to be a long season. Every team is going to play each other once. There are seven teams in each region, which means six teams uh, will or six games to be played with one weeks of bye or one week of bye, which we'll cover more. But uh, looks like that's going to be it. Crown and Jewels taking the oh. fifth game. Uh, 5-0 for Crown and Jewels. A little bit surprising based on some of the recent results between these two teams. But again, this is uh, the biggest stage. And on the biggest stage, Crown and, Jewel, Crown and Jewels comes out and uh, does a phenomenal job taking every single game in the series. Yeah, I, I mean, that was just really, really surprising. The fact that, uh, you know, it just I did not expect a 5-0 result in all of that. By any means. Yeah, Crown and Jewels, uh, they did have some losses recently in ESL. Uh, and, uh, you know, that didn't seem to affect them at all. Coming out, uh, setting the standard at five games. I wonder if we will see that in any other matchup. We've got a lot of good games today for the EU region. Up next, we've got Flipside versus Spectral, followed up by uh, MyXMD versus SK. So really good matches coming up. Every single game we have today, top tier uh, matches. You could not ask for anything better. So uh, I'm excited for the rest of what we got today, but Crown and Jewels setting the pace at five games to zero. Yeah, I mean, that's good. That's a huge break for them throughout this regular season. I mean, if they can start off that strong, especially against a matchup that was thought to be really close, then that's going to help them, especially as we go further into the season and they get some matchups that maybe are more heavily tilted in their favor. Because if they can 5-0 this, then they can 5-0 that. And that's going to be a big break on their part to really own the rest of the season and contend with some of the teams that I think a lot of players were like, you know, you've got teams like Flipside Tactics and SK Gaming who a lot of players and a lot of teams thought, oh, these are going to be the teams to beat. These are going to be the teams that really rock the EU region but we could see some really big changes here. You Absolutely. Know? And we're going to see how Flipside